It had only been up for an hour, and he was already shooting his mouth off. You see, his two daughters had hogged the bathroom for what seemed like an eternity before he finally got to brush his teeth. And can you guess what he saw when he got in? Yes, you're right. One of his daughters left the top off the toothpaste. You pair of just animals! Mr. Govis shouted across the landing. You're part of the feral, the feckless, and the long-term useless! He went on, and can you guess what his daughter said in reply? Yes, you're right. Nothing. They ignored him as usual. Now, Mr. Gobby's Jaguar was in for a service, which was costing him an arm and a leg, of course, and making him even more irritable. So, he decided to go on the train to work, taking his folding bicycle with him. That'll be an extra thirty quid, mate, said the train guard to Mr. Gobby, whilst nodding at the bike as he brought it on board. It's peak time, you know. And, could you guess what Mr. Gobby said back to him? Yes, you're right. A highly predictable, high-pitched rant about living in Great Britain, not Standard Britain, that the rail network was run by Muppets, and that he'd do a better job running British transport, but he couldn't afford the wage cut. Now, eventually, Mr. Gobby's train arrived in Houston, and he got his bike out of the storage area, and... Can you guess what he did next? No, you're wrong. He didn't unfurl the bike and pedal the two miles into the office. No, instead, he got a taxi and made the driver drop him off a hundred yards from his work and he pedaled the last bit to make his colleagues think he was on a fitness drive. Now, Mr. Gobby had a job on the radio being rude to people and he was very good at it. His producer told him about the floods in Yorkshire and suggested getting a weather expert to discuss it. All right, said Mr. Gobby, but I thought we were going to talk about my book, Sean. Huh? Huh? And so, presently, weatherman Michael Fish was phoned up on Mr. Gobby's show. Mr. Gobby, of course, had no intention of talking about the current issue, especially the mood he was in, and he decided instead to mock Michael Fish in an uninterrupted five-minute severe tongue-lashing for his failure to predict a hurricane twenty years ago. And can you guess what Michael Fish said in reply? Yes, you're right, he said. When I want tips on forecasting, I'll ask. Poor Mr. Gobby. I think he needs a kiss and a hug and somebody to tell him he loves him, the stupid plonker. <laughs> there we are, Mr. Gobby.